Part 2. Creating Safety Program Using ASIMON Plus Software The following slide outlines the five steps needed to create a safety program in ASIMON Plus software. Step 1. Establishing the connection. Step 2. Detecting the AS interface slaves. Step 3. Creating the safety circuit. Step 4. Downloading the program to the KE4 safety monitor. And Step 5. Monitoring diagnostics. So in Stage 2 of our integration process, we will be focused on creating the safety program with Simon Plus software. So we'll navigate to locating our Simon Plus software. Here we click on OK and maximize our window. The first part in our process is establishing a connection. So we'll, in the toolbar, select Monitor Operations and click on the Setup Interface. In this case, since we are connecting with over Ethernet to our KE4 safety monitor, we will use our UDP and browse for available devices to connect to. What is noted is two devices available to connect with. One is our K20 EV24 gateway, but this is not a compatible device to establish a connection with Simon Plus software. The second is the safety monitor where the safety program will reside. However, note the IP address is still set for zero, so we'll need to establish an IP address for our safety monitor. The process is simple. We double click on the safety monitor, and in the screen that populates, we will make our selection with static and assign our IP address based on the subnet associated with our K20 EV24 gateway. So the one I pre-populated was 192.18.10.13 and we'll click on OK. Immediately it shows that there is a change that has been made. We'll click on OK. As we go back to our window here, we should immediately see our KE4 safety monitor now has a pre-assigned IP address associated to it. So this will allow us now to make our connection to the KE4 safety monitor. Note the window here now populates accordingly with the new IP address. And as we click OK, we have our connection established in the lower half. The warning sign that appears is the operation mode without AS interface power supply has been activated, but no 24 volt power supply is connected. We will discuss this in another dialog box that appears later. For now, let's click on ignore on this dialog box. The next step which we want to do is to upload what exists in terms of a workspace from our safety monitor. So here we will make a selection of monitor to PC allowing us to pull what exists in terms of a workspace from our safety monitor. Here it opens a blank workspace because there's no safety program currently configured. We will proceed by clicking on the monitor settings option. And the next step of our process will allow us to make a selection of which device do we want to connect to. In this case, we're connecting to the safety monitor, so we'll make that radial selection. This is an important selection because that associates to the dialog box we just spoke of. We will proceed on the next tab, which is the bus information tab. In this case, we have our KE4 safety monitor connected to our AS interface network such that we'll initiate a detection of AS interface slaves and see what is observed. In our case, we have three slaves that are observed from our safety monitor. Slave addresses include 1, 2, and 3. In this dialog box, since we don't want to launch control tools, we'll click on ignore. One thing to note in browsing the nodes on AS Interface, 
a safety monitor is unable to make a distinction between a safety node and a standard node. In our case, at node 3 we have our e-stop, so we need to manually make the selection for that to be a safety node instead of a standard node. Nodes 1 and 2 are standard slaves. So to keep that in mind as you're doing browses with your KE4 safety monitor. From there, we need to create a base address for our safety monitor on AS Interface. The base address for the safety monitor allows for it to be another node on AS Interface. Our master in this arrangement of the AS Interface network is the EV24 gateway, such that the KE4 safety monitor is no longer assigned the master and needs to have a node address assigned to it. This is done by clicking on the Diagnostic Service tab and under the Monitor Base Address, making our selection for an appropriate node address for our safety monitor. In this case, the safety monitor being node 14. Next, we'll proceed on to the Local tab. And this is, again, an important tab because what it's indicating is we cannot have the selection by default. The KE4 safety monitor is a master, so we need to deselect that one. And also, this, based on that initial dialog that comes up, um, the operation is without an AS Interface power supply is not the case. We are using an AS Interface power supply to power up our AS Interface network. So in order to remove that dialog box we experienced earlier, we need to deselect this box. At this point, we click on OK. And one final item I overlooked in the monitor information screen was a name for our file. And we'll just call that a simple name of test project. So at this point, we are ready to begin creating our safety circuit in Simon Plus. Our safety circuit will be our basic circuit consisting of an e-stop, a monitored stop, and a OSSD stop category 0. So let's begin with this process. As indicated earlier, our e-stop has a node address 3 associated to it, and the filtering we use with e-stops is dependent with filtering. Next we will look for our stop category 0 device and introduce that into our safety workspace. Here we'll keep everything at the default because we will be using the local OSSD. And the last selection in our safety circuit that we want to introduce is a monitored start. In the case of the monitored start, we have a two push button LED. This is assigned a node address 2, such that we'll make that selection accordingly. In our case, we want to have a red button initiate the reset in our safety circuit, such that we will make our selection as input to here and click on OK. So our workspace is complete with the safety circuit that we wanted to introduce. The next step in the process is downloading our configuration to the safety monitor. Here on AS Interface, a dialog box that comes up indicates that we need to have at least five slaves present in order to have our program able to be downloaded. Since this is a demo arrangement, this, this has happened and we need to address this issue. So we need to cancel out of this box, click on our monitor settings option. Under our bus information, we simply need to introduce a simulated slave. So actually, on the Diagnostic Services tab, in order to introduce an additional simulated slave, we note here in the dialog the simulated slaves and we'll add the single slave necessary to keep to the minimum requirement of AS Interface. After this selection is made, we now should be able to download our configuration. We are now prompted for our password to download the configuration. The default password is typically Simon plus, but if it's been changed accordingly, that's the password that needs to be entered in. We click on OK. In my case, I entered in the wrong password, so I will enter in my new password. Again, note when we started, our KE4 safety monitor was an out of the box safety monitor, so it's still using the Simon password, and I introduced my new password now. At this point, we are asked 
do we need to teach do we would we like to teach the coding sequence and since we have an e stop in our safety program we do need to initiate the, the coding sequence teaching the key part in teaching the coding sequence is to assure that the safety device is released as the coding teaching is occurring here our safety program asks for validation to assure that the proper engineer or level of individual is privileged to be able to make changes to the safety program so we need to have the proper credentials entered in here our configuration is successfully validated and we are able to go online So after the download has completed, what we immediately observe is a circuit that does not appear to be in an active state. We have a device with the e-stop in a grayed state. We have also some red states. So what we want to do is look at maybe what is reported on our EV24 gateway. Let's take a look. On the EV24 gateway, we have a diagnostic noted that we have node address 14 and node address 15 as unknown slaves. This is indicated by the gateway because we haven't stored the active configuration of the base address for the safety monitor into the gateway. Therefore, through a very simple procedure, we could, we could store this configuration. We go through the display and we click on OK, Quick Setup, and a Store to Run. Let's do so. As we store the configuration to our EV24 gateway, immediately our safety circuit takes an active state. Now we have a ready state with green colors associated to our e-stop and our monitors start waiting for response before we could start our circuit. So this is kind of the state we're looking for to be in a ready state. Since our safety circuit is associated, the reset sequence is associated to a red push button, what we'll do is click on the red push button in the simulated setup, and that'll allow the circuit to reset. So in order to reset the sequence, we need to press the red push button. And this allows our circuit now to be in full operation. This completes stage two of our integration process of creating a safety program in our KE4 safety monitor.